Thanks. Uh, so I'm going to actually end up, although Michael and I never met, I'm going to end up in exactly the same maps, but from the exact opposite direction. But I actually want to start with a, a pivotal piece of legislation uh, that actually I think is the beginning of the turnover in what we consider standard. And it's uh, an oddity comes from the uh, margins. I'm going to talk about the future being in the margins in a number of ways, but one of them is the kind of kids that are inventing the future of education. And um, the, the law is called the National Instructional Materials Accessibility Standard. Most of you have probably not heard of it. It's referred to as NIMAS now. All of the publishers, McGraw-Hill is very aware of NIMAS. What NIMAS does is it stipulates that it is not possible anymore, starting in last year, to publish textbooks in print versions only. They must come out and be distributed to all students in XML marked up beautiful versions specified in a standard which would allow many different kinds of kids to be able to get into those textbooks and use them, whether they can see or not, whether they're learning disabled or not, whether they're autistic or not, whether blah, 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 whether English is their first language. Setting a standard that says an XML underlying digital base is what's key, and what comes out of that can be a print version, a web-based version, a, a something on a CD, but it's changing the industry, and it came, oddly enough, from kids with disabilities. And I just want to uh, talk about a key word in the legislation. It describes these new additions must be provided by each state and district in the country to students who have print disabilities. Now, most of you, I'm sure, have never heard the term print disabilities. It's a key uh, early harbinger of things to come. What it says is, instead of calling the kids print disabled, it says they have a print disability which starts to co-locate the problem as the interaction between a child and a specific medium. And what it starts to say is that print has disabilities. And we have a paper coming out to describe the difference between print disability and prints disabilities. What are the disabilities that print has as an educational medium that allows us to start calling kids as having a print disability, which means that print doesn't work for them, which is a very different thing than calling them learning disabled. So uh, out of that concept, which is law again, uh, I just want to jump quickly to the idea of what we do is called universal design for learning at CAST, and it's how do we design learning environments that work for everybody? Um, and I'll just say what the three words mean. Universal means we, in fact, most of our work begins with kids who are in even a worse off community uh, than Susan began, kids who may be poor but also who have uh, disabilities in the traditional media and schooling. They're kids uh, who are not making it at all. And universal means everybody. How do we make uh, learning environments that will work for everybody? Design is how do we design an environment that is intended for learning, not for just uh, transmitting information, <laughs> but an, uh, an environment that is designed much like you, the exercise equipment you have, where it's individualized to you with the amount of support you need, the chairs are going to be just right, and individualized to you in terms of the challenge. How much challenge do you need to be right? And lastly, learning, I'll skip that because you know what it is, but let me just give, uh, these are universal learning additions uh, done in, in partnership with Google, actually, and uh, supported by the Carnegie Corporation. Andreas Enriquez is here, you can hear more about it. To get environments in which adolescents would actually see the connection between good literature and the power that Google has. And I'm not gonna have time to go through it, but we can show it later and you can see it on the web. They're all free on the web. What they are is traditional, often looking traditional materials like Call of the Wild, but when you go into Call of the Wild, it will open it up in an environment that supports kids in reading. Every word will read itself aloud. The words can easily translate, as Allison said, into other languages that English isn't your first language. But it also embeds the uh, research-based reading strategy support directly in the book. Uh, those of you that are in literacy know um, reciprocal teaching strategies. They're built into the book. So a student is learning to read while they're reading. They're not going somewhere else. And lastly, or I wish I had more time, but if you don't have a parent to read to you, the book will read to you, and the book will help you engage in reading and ask you and ask you to do uh, interactive things to show a reading. And lastly, the thing I don't think I have time because they give me the sign is this is embedded within a network as it should be. So when I'm wondering in the call of the wild here, it has little things. You can see those little pluses. It says, I need to know more. 
And what it'll do is it'll literally go to Google Maps. You can see where are we in this book in real life. So we zoom right in on the river that Michael was showing you. And when I want to know about the author, what we're building right now is you go to face page and find out who was this author, what was it, who were his friends, how does he relate to you, you can connect with it. So we're taking traditional literature, the entire novel called The Wild There, Lincoln's speeches are there, there's all kinds of cool things there, but they're embedded in a world the kids really live in. And it's a world in which every single student, whether you're blind, dyslexic, so on, can uh, be there because it's digital. We have the flexibility we don't have in print. Print has too many disabilities for our children. Thank you. Thank you.